Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Balsa Williams and with me is Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates rejuvenated and transformed Sri Kashi Vishwanath Dham in Varanasi. Nation pays homage to martyrs of 2001 Parliament terror attack. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment to launch national helpline against atrocities on scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. No post or vacancies abolished in public sector banks during last six years, says Minister of State for Finance in Lok Sabha. Over 133 crore 24 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate stands at 98.37%. Madurai Minakshi Temple opens for the public today. Two terrorists killed in an encounter with security forces at Rangrit on the outskirts of Srinagar city. Group of seven nations warns Russia to face consequences if Ukraine is invaded. India's Harna Sandhu wins Miss Universe 2021 crown. And the Indian cricket team to undergo three-day quarantine before flying to South Africa. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is also causing concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And other news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated Phase 1 of Sri Kashi Vishwanath Dham in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh in the presence of over 3,000 saints and dignitaries. जिनके हाथ में डमरू है उनकी सरकार है जहां गंगा अपनी धारा बदलकर बहती हो उस काशी को भला कौन रोक सकता है काशी खंड में भगवान शंकर ने खुद कहा है बिना मम प्रसादम भाई कह काशी प्रति प्रद्युत्ते अर्थात बिना मेरी प्रसन्नता के काशी में कौन आ सकता है कौन इसका सेवन कर सकता है काशी में महादेव की इच्छा के बिना न कोई आता है और न यहाँ उनकी इच्छा के बिना कुछ होता है यहाँ जो कुछ होता है महादेव की इच्छा से होता है ये जो कुछ भी हुआ है महादेव ने ही किया है ई विश्वनाथ धाम तो बाबा आपन आशीर्वाद से बनेले हुआ उनकर इच्छा के बिना का कोई पत्ता हिल सकेला कोई कितना बड़ा हवे तो अपने घरे का हो ये ऊल ये सबे कोई आ सकेला कुछ कर सकेला साथियों बाबा के साथ अगर किसी और का योगदान है तो वो बाबा के गणों का है बाबा के गण यानी हमारे सारे काशीवासी सारे काशीवासी जो खुद महादेव के ही रूप है जब भी बाबा को अपनी शक्ति अनुभव करानी होती है वो काशी वासियों का माध्यम ही बना देते हैं 
फिर काशी करती है और दुनिया देखती है इदम शिवाय इदम नमा इदम शिवाय इदम नमा भाई और बहनों मैं आज अपने हर उस श्रमिक भाई बहनों का भी आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं जिसका पसीना इस भव्य परिसर के निर्माण में बहा है कोरोना के इस विपरीत काल में भी उन्होंने यहां पर काम रुकने नहीं दिया मुझे अभी अपने इस श्रमिक साथियों से मिलने का अवसर मिला उनके आशीर्वाद लेने का सौभाग्य मिला हमारे कारीगर हमारे सिविल इंजीनियरिंग से जुड़े लोग प्रशासन के लोग वो परिवार जिनके यहां घर हुआ करते थे मैं सभी का अभिनंदन करता हूं During the inauguration function Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said under the guidance and motivation of Prime Minister this auspicious day has come He said the Kashi was earlier rebuilt by Maharani Ahilya Bai Holkar He also said that Mahatma Gandhi dreamt of making Kashi clean when he visited the city and now Prime Minister Narendra Modi has made his dream come true Earlier the prime minister reached Kal Bhairav temple known as the Ghar of Kashi and offered prayers there. The prime minister then visited Shri Kashi with Vishwanath Dham carrying holy Ganga jal from the river Ganga to Kashi Vishwanath corridor. The prime minister will witness Ganga aarti while on board a row row vessel in the evening. Phase 1 of Shri Kashi Vishwanath Dham has been constructed at a cost of around 339 crore rupees. Our correspondent reports that the project is spread over a massive area of 5 lakh square feet whereas the earlier premise was limited to just around 3000 square feet. The nation pays homage to the brave hearts who sacrificed their lives to valiantly defend the parliament against a dastardly terror attack on this day in 2001. The president vice president prime minister home minister and defense minister paid homage to the brave security personnel in a tweet mr ramnath kovin said the nation shall forever remain grateful to them for their supreme sacrifice in a tweet mr m venkaiya naidu said the nation is eternally indebted to them for their supreme sacrifice he said terrorism is a threat to humanity and world peace prime minister narendra modi said their service to the nation and supreme sacrifice continues to inspire every citizen home minister amit shah in a tweet said their unparalleled valor and immortal sacrifice will always inspire people to serve the nation defense minister rajnath singh said the nation will remain grateful for their courage and supreme sacrifice in the line of duty both houses of parliament also reiterated their firm resolve to fight terrorism with determination when the house met rajya sabha chairman m venkaiya naidu in his reference mentioned that the house recalls with gratitude the supreme sacrifices of our security personnel including two of the parliament security service staff along with five delhi police personnel and a woman constable of the central reserve police force one gardener of the cpwd and a camera person were also martyred on the fateful day mr naidu said by sacrificing their lives these martyrs have set an example of indomitable courage and outstanding devotion of duty As soon as the house assembled for the day in his opening remarks Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla said that the security personnel of Parliament Security Delhi Police and CRPF have made supreme sacrifice in protecting the temple of democracy he said the day makes our commitment more strong for unity integrity and sovereignty towards the country The government today said a bill on cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency is under finalization for consideration of the cabinet in a written reply in the Lok Sabha the minister of state for finance Pankaj Chaudhary however said currently cryptocurrencies are unregulated in the country The center today said no post or vacancies have been abolished in public sector banks PSBs during the last 6 years Minister of State for Finance Dr Bhagwat Karad 
informed the Lok Sabha as on 1-12-2021, there are over 8.05 lakh sanctioned posts in PSBs and 41,177 posts are lying vacant. Replying to a question in the House, Dr. Karad said 95% staff is in position against the sanctioned staff strength. Minister of State for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Dr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar informed that to meet the COVID-19 posed challenges, the government is designing special skill development and training programs. Replying to questions in the Lok Sabha, he said that COVID-19 pandemic has adversely affected the skill development and entrepreneurship programs in the country. He said in association with the Director General of Training, the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship has also developed blended and hybrid digital vocational education and training courses to augment the learning of ITI students across the country. He said 3.44 crore youths have been trained and skilled so far since the launch of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana in 2015. The Rajya Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. following opposition uproar over suspension of 12 members from the winter session of Parliament. When the House reassembled at 12 noon after the first adjournment, the leader of the House and Union Minister Piyush Goyal rejected the allegations of Congress leader Malikarjun Karge and said that he himself reached out to the opposition members to resolve the deadlock over the suspension of members. Mr. Goyal said the suspended members have tarnished the image of the House by their unruly behaviour during the last day of the monsoon session of Parliament. He said these members have so far not apologised for their conduct. Meanwhile, the Deputy Chairman Harivansh tried to conduct the questionnaire, but due to the opposition uproar, the Chair had to adjourn the House till 2 p.m. 133 crore 24 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Active caseload currently stands at 91,456 and active cases account for less than 1% of total cases. The recovery rate is currently at 98.37%, which is the highest since March last year. A total of 7,973 recoveries were recorded in the last 24 hours. A total of 7,350 new cases were reported in the same period. 65 crore, 66 lakh total tests have been conducted so far. The government today said more than 140 crore, 28 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. Health Ministry said more than 17 crore 83 lakh unutilized COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states, UTs and private hospitals to be administered. Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation has made efforts to expedite anti-COVID-19 vaccination program within its boundaries. It has taken various measures for speedy vaccination and as a part of this, now Civic Body has planned to organize night vaccination in few areas within some days. BMC officials said that such drives would help enhance second vaccination rate. A report. The Mumbai Civic Body has been striving to expedite COVID vaccination in the city by devising various innovative ideas. One such being is inoculating people at night. Currently, 105 percentage of city's 92.3 lakh adult population has been administered first dose and 79 percent population is fully vaccinated. The basic idea behind this drive was especially to reach out to those people who can't leave work for vaccination. At present, vaccination centers are run from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but the efforts are being made to stretch these work hours to 10 p.m. Though decision has been taken to start night vaccination drive, its implementation may take some days as planning was undergoing. Likewise, in Nandurbar district in Khandesh, which is a tribal district, the night vaccination is underway in full swing. As the district is situated in remote area, there are difficulties faced by head staff in reaching out to people. Hence, the head staff has been organizing night vaccination camps in villages. With this, Nandurbar has become the first district in Maharashtra where night vaccination is organized. The famous Madurai Meenakshi Temple opens for the public today. The State Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowment Department has opened the Madurai Meenakshi Sundareshwar Temple to all devotees from today onwards. Earlier, the Endowment Department had announced that visiting persons are required to have a vaccination certificate. Over 40,000 people visit the famous Madurai Meenakshi Temple daily. The government has placed awareness messages at various places to follow the COVID-19 procedures. 
In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, two terrorists were killed by security forces in an encounter that broke out at Rangreet in the outskirts of Srinagar city this afternoon. The identity of the slain terrorist is being ascertained. Meanwhile, the search operation in the area was going on when reports last came in. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates rejuvenated and transformed Shri Kashi Vishwanath Dham in Varanasi. Nation pays homage to martyrs of 2001 Parliament terror attack. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment to launch national helpline against atrocities on scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. No post or vacancy is abolished in public sector banks during the last six years, says Minister of State for Finance in Lok Sabha. Over 133 crore 24 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate stands at 98.37%. Madurai Minakshi Temple opens for the public today. Two terrorists killed in an encounter by security forces at a drunk rates on the outskirts of Srinagar city. Group of seven nations warns Russia to face consequences if Ukraine is invaded. India's Harnal Sandhu wins Miss Universe 2021 crown and the Indian cricket team to undergo three-day quarantine before flying to South Africa. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Midday News. The Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha interacted with members of various associations of Langars and Bhandaras, which serve the pilgrims during the annual pilgrimage of Sri Amarnath Shrine Yatra in Kashmir. Speaking on the occasion, Lieutenant Governor observed that the Union Territory Government is committed for providing world-class facilities to the pilgrims, besides facilitating Langars and Bhandaras during the Yatra. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief at the demise of BJP leader Harvans Kapoor. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said he was a veteran legislator and administrator and will be remembered for his contributions to public service and social welfare. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. And now, let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. This constituent assembly declares its firm and solemn resolve. The Objectives Resolution 1946 was introduced by Jawaharlal Nehru on 13th of December 1946. Proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic and to draw up for her future governance a constitution. This resolution was a reflection of aspirations of makers of the constitution and was later framed as the preamble of the Indian constitution. The assembly extensively debated the resolution between 16th and 19th of December. The resolution was again taken up for discussion on the 21st of January 1947. During these deliberations, the Assembly discussed 
various aspects of the objectives resolution and the political context that surrounded it, including the absence of princely states, federalism, minority rights and socio-economic rights. Finally, on the 22nd of January 1947, after due deliberations, discussions and responses to various debates, the President of the Assembly, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, signaled to the members that the time had come to vote on the resolution. He read out the resolution, first in English, then in Hindi. Sri Mohanlal Saxena read out the Urdu translation. Members of the Assembly then voted in favour of the resolution and adopted it with all members standing. The purpose of the resolution was to imagine a future direction of the Republic of India. The constitution was made by a few people, but it was the constitution of every Indian. We, the people of India. The very first sentence of the preamble, we, the people of India, tells a story about the efforts of the makers of the constitution to capture the aspirations of all Indians. And this story, which was started by this resolution, later became the world-famous preamble of the Constitution of India. Time, constitute India into a Today we also remember noted Gandhian freedom fighter and former bureaucrat Lakshmi Chand Jain, who was born on 13th of December 1925 in Rajasthan. While in his youth, Lakshmi Chan took part in the Quit India movement during 1942. Later, in 1947, he was put in charge of the Kingsway camp in North Delhi, which was a shelter for displaced persons. He helped introduce cooperative societies for farming and cottage industries into rehabilitation camps. After independence of India, he joined the bureaucracy and served as a member of the Planning Commission, as Indian High Commissioner to South Africa, as a member of the World Commission on Dance, and as Secretary of the Indian Cooperative Union and the All India Handicrafts Board. Jain was one of the earliest cooperative leaders in the country and helped Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay organize the Indian Cooperative Union. For his selfless commitment to attack India's poverty at the grassroots levels, Lakshmi Chand Jain was awarded the Magasese Award in 1988. In 2011, he was chosen posthumously for Padma Vibhushan by the Government of India, but the family declined to accept the award since he had been against the concept of state honours. He died on the 14th of November 2010 in New Delhi. We salute this great Indian and his love for the motherland. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार Hadi has taken a big stride in the global fashion arena. U.S.-based world's leading fashion brand Patagonia is now using handcrafted Khadi denim fabric for making denim apparel. Patagonia had purchased nearly 30,000 meters of Khadi denim fabric worth 1.08 crore rupees from Gujarat. This new initiative of Khadi and Village Industries Commission KVIC is not only creating extra man hours for Khadi artisans of Gujarat, but is also fulfilling the Prime Minister's dream of local to global. 
केवीआईसी चेयरमैन विनय कुमार सक्सेना सेड खादी हैज इवॉल्व्ड इनटू द मोस्ट फैशनेबल एंड ट्रेंड सेटिंग वेयरेबल इवन एज इट रिटेन्स इट्स ओरिजिनल वैल्यू ऑफ बीइंग द मोस्ट सस्टेनेबल एंड इको फ्रेंडली फैब्रिक इन द वर्ल्ड Union Tourism and Culture Minister G Kishan Reddy said the government is contemplating modifying the guidelines of Swadeshi Darshan scheme for phase 2. Replying to supplementary questions in the Lok Sabha, Mr Reddy said the first phase of Swadeshi Darshan scheme will be completed within the year 2022. He said the center is in touch with the states and governments for speedy completion of sanctioned programs under phase 1. जो नया स्वदेशी दर्शन के जितने भी आदरणीय पार्लियामेंट सदस्य जितने भी प्रपोजल दिया है अभी इसका थोड़ा गाइडलाइंस हम चेंज कर रहे हैं स्वदेशी दर्शन टू के लिए जितने भी गाइडलाइन चेंज होने के बाद जितने भी प्रपोजल्स आए प्रपोजल से विषय पर चर्चा हो सकती है हम जरूर स्वदेशी दर्शन टू आने के बाद गाइडलाइन चेंज होने के बाद जितने भी आप लोगों का प्रपोजल आते हैं स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का प्रपोजल आते हैं इसी विषय पर सोचकर जरूर हम काम करेंगे group of seven nations has warned that russia will have to face massive consequences and pay severe costs if president vladimir putin attacks ukraine the g7 foreign ministers meeting was held in the northern english city of liverpool during the meeting that concluded yesterday the g7 delegates unitedly condemned russia's military build up near ukraine and called on moscow to deescalate They also reaffirmed unwavering commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Indian cricket team will undergo a 3-day quarantine in Mumbai before flying to Johannesburg, South Africa on Wednesday by a chartered flight. Members of the South Africa bound squad have been asked to check into a five-star hotel near the Mumbai International Airport to fulfill the biosecurity protocols. India will play 3 tests and three ODIs but at this point only the members of the test squad will fly to the rainbow nation para athlete chandeep singh bags silver medal at para world taekwondo championships becomes first para athlete from jnk to achieve such a great place at world level para athlete chandeep singh has created history by clinching a silver medal in the men's plus 80 kg event at the 9th para world taekwondo championships on sunday held at istanbul in turkey from 9 to 12 december 2021 india's harna sandhu has been crowned miss universe 2021 two decades after lara datta won the title in the year 2000 21 year old harnaz has won the miss universe crown at the contest held in elat israel this morning harnaz edged out contestants from paraguay and south africa to bag the crown the moment her name was declared as the winner harnaz broke down with tears of joy she could also be seen joining her hands in gratitude during the final question and answer round being asked what advice she would like to give to young women on how to deal with the pressure they face today she said the biggest pressure the youth of today is facing is to believe in themselves to know that you are unique and that's what makes you beautiful stop comparing yourself with others and let's talk about more important things that's happening worldwide i think this is what you need to understand come out speak for yourself because you are the leader of your life you are the voice of your own i believe in myself and that's why i'm standing here today thank you Mexico's Andrea Mesa the reigning queen passed on her crown to the new successor. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates rejuvenated and transformed Sri Kashi Vishwanath Dham in Varanasi. Nation pays homage to martyrs of 2001 parliament terror attack. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment to launch national helpline against atrocities on scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. No post or vacancies abolished in public sector banks during last 6 years says Minister of State for Finance in Lok Sabha over 133 crore 24 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive recovery rate stands at 98.37% Madurai Meenakshi temple opens for the public today two terrorists killed in an encounter by security forces at Rangreet on the outskirts of Srinagar city Group of 7 nations warns Russia to face consequences if Ukraine is invaded. India's Harna Sandhu wins Miss Universe 2021 crown and the Indian cricket team to undergo 3-day quarantine before flying to South Africa. And with that we end the midday news.